I have written a program that plays Minesweeper and frankly it kicks ass. In this video, let's look at how I did it, which strategies can be used and what results can be reached. Let's go! Minesweeper, the game that was included in Windows 3.1 or at least that's as far back as I can remember. I'm not sure if back then I managed to solve the expert one and remembering how I played, even if I did, it would have been more luck than logic. Anyway, years have passed and it's time for me to wreck apart the game that baffled my teenage brain by unleashing the power of Python on it. First, I needed to pick the version of Minesweeper to play. There are dozens of options to choose from. There are Minesweepers from previous versions of Windows. There are clone Minesweepers with some extra features and online Minesweepers. You can even play Minesweeper right there in Google search results. The Minesweeper that I have chosen, minesweeperonline.com, is also one of those places where those Minesweeper champions hang out. So naturally, a program solves the game several times faster than a human. And of course, the results my program generated stood out and were justifiably deleted by admin. So if admins from minesweeperonline.com are watching, sorry about that. I downloaded a light and simple version of Minesweeper clone, Minesweeper X, which is a great version of Minesweeper and I highly recommend it. Okay, enough with the storytelling, let's get into the programming. Here's the general overview of what we are going to do. Take a screenshot, read the screenshot, find all the closed and open cells, mines, numbers, everything. Analyze. Where are the safe cells we can click? Where are the mines we can mark? And finally, clicking. After this, we should have uncovered some new data to work off of. So repeat. Screenshot read, analysis, clicks, and keep repeating this over and over again until there's no more closed cells left, which would mean the game is solved, or alternatively, until the program makes a mistake and blows itself up. A few words about reading the values off of a screenshot. Actually, Minesweeper kind of makes it easy to do, as all the cells are of the same size, placed as a perfect grid, and most importantly, values are not only showed with numbers, but with colors too. One is blue, two is green, three is red, and so on. And from programming perspective, it's way easier to tell apart colors than shapes. So thank you Minesweeper for being so helpful about it. Next, the analysis. And if you are a young aspiring Minesweeper player, I hope these strategies would come handy for you too. In total, I came up with six strategies of determining if cells are safe or contain mines. They are basic, group, subgroup, counter, CSP, and finally, guessing. Let's look at them one by one. First one, and the most obvious, basic strategy, and also the only strategy I used playing as a teenager. This is how it works. Look at a cell. If there are as many closed cells as remaining mines, they all are mines. If you mark as many mines as the number on a cell, the rest are safe. This strategy, although used for opening the vast majority of the cells on the board throughout any game, will not get you too far. You will find yourself stuck every now and then even on a beginner board and you will definitely get stuck on an expert board. For that, there's the strategy number two, groups. To illustrate how it works, here's an example. In this situation, the third cell is safe. This is how I know. The first one tells us that there is a mine in the first two cells. Also, there's a mine in the first three cells, but it can only be true if the third cell is safe. By similar logic, in a row one, two, third cell will be a mine. As for the efficiency, it can help uncover 10 to 20% of cells in a game. Third one is a strategy I call subgroups. Consider this example. There is no overlapping groups here, and yet there is some deduction we can do. Group around one has one mine, which means second and third cells of that group have no more than one mine. Meaning that two's right one definitely has a mine. Here's another example. Three cells next to two have two mines, meaning any two cells in that group 
have at least one mine. So two next to the one have at least one mine, meaning the one's left one is safe. So these three strategies, basic, group, and subgroup, are doing most of the work uncovering cells in Minesweeper. But the fact of the matter is, and this is especially true for the expert level, there comes a time when you will no longer be able to tell safe cell and mine anymore. And before we get to guessing, there are two more strategies worth mentioning. They both give practical results relatively seldom, only once in a few games, but since we want to avoid guessing at all costs, we should try everything we can. The first of those rare but sometimes useful strategies is count, as in 1 to 3 count. Here we are going to use the fact that Minesweeper displays number of remaining mines. It doesn't really help much in the beginning of the game. Now, closer to the end of the game, there are mines we don't know the exact location of, but we know the region where those mines are. If you can find these locations for all remaining mines in the game, the rest of cells are safe. Or if the number of remaining unaccounted mines exactly matches unaccounted cells, those are mines. Last strategy before we start guessing is called CSP for Constraint Satisfaction Problem. It's a class of problems in mathematics ranging from Sudoku and other Japanese number-based puzzles to riddles with a set of conditions. Minesweeper also can be viewed as exactly this kind of puzzle where conditions are sums of mines in certain groups of cells. When you start solving this problem you may find that whatever the possible combinations of mines are certain cells are always going to be safe or always going to be mines. While playing casually, this strategy can be used as what-if approach. Your logic goes something like, if cell A has a mine, then B doesn't, then C has a mine, and so on and so forth, and after a few steps you arrive at a contradiction. Which means that initial assumption was wrong, and A is indeed safe. As I said, last two strategies, counting mines and CSP, are comparatively seldom to yield result, about once in a few games. But it's still better than the last strategy we have, guessing. The logic can only take you so far, and quite often, and for experts it effectively happens a few times in every game, you don't know where the next mine or safe cell is. You have no other choice but to make a guess. And guess we will, but we also want to make guessing as successful as possible. So let's try to maximize our chance of success. For example, if you click one of those 50-50 cells, your chance of survival is exactly 50%, which is quite risky. While if you click one of 8 cells surrounding a 1, that's only 12.5% of death. So first thing to do is to calculate the chances of encountering a mine for every uncovered cell remaining in the game. And this is where a number of mines can come in handy too. With that you can calculate the chance not only for cells next to your numbers, but also for cells that are still out there in the wild. And chances are it would be safer just to click a random cell in the middle of nowhere than taking one of those 50% or 33% chances. We're almost done with guessing, there's one more thing that can make your guessing even more efficient. Ideally, for the cell that we picked for guessing, we not only want it to be mine-free, but also to produce a nice opening with a lot of new clues to work on. And this is something we can actually calculate. The most famous outcome of this approach is the first click of Minesweeper game. It is somewhat counterintuitive, but it's much more probable to get an opening if you start your game from the corner, rather than if you start in the middle of the board, like most people do. And that was it. The solver was ready to be unleashed on approaching hordes of Minesweeper games. Let's talk results. Speed. To be honest, I didn't optimize the solver for speed specifically, but even so. The program obviously solves the board way, way faster than any human. These are my bot's record times. I'm sure it can be solved even faster, but that's not the challenge I wanted to take. The actual challenge was in the success rate, what percentage of games my algorithm would win. To check that I ran 1000 games and measured the results. And here it is. For the beginner, program cleared the board in 81% of games, or about 4 in 5 games. For intermediate, we had 75% of success, 
which is three out of four games. And for expert, it's 30%, a bit lower than one in three games. Are these good results? Well, the thing is, I was clearly not the first person to try and write a Minesweeper solver, and many people who have done it before me left a paper trail, ranging from bachelor thesis to actual scientific papers. They have listed results from other papers, so it is quite convenient to measure my success against others. Beginner, I'm in the second place out of six, which is great. Intermediate, I'm in the fourth place out of nine, so right about in the middle. Expert, number six out of eight. Oh well, somehow my program does comparatively better with easier and smaller boards. So these are the results. I'd say they're not stellar, but they're not too bad either. All in all, I would definitely consider this a success. And that's about it. The source code is in the description. Sorry about the messiness. It, I've spent so much time trying to raise those winning percentages. I have no stamina left for straightening things up. And before signing off, I want to say thank you to Code Bullet, because it was his channel and his Minesweeper video in particular that gave me the idea of programming solver in the first place. Thanks to Minesweeper.info, which is a great resource for everything Minesweeper. Also, thanks to MinesweeperOnline.com, with apologies for the nuisance I may have caused. This is it. In the end, let's enjoy a few minutes of automatic solving of Minesweeper puzzles. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, subscribe and see you in other videos. Bye.